Okay, hello everybody. Welcome back to Circle Time. It's me, Kelsey, obviously. And we have a very special guest with us today. Would you like to introduce yourself to the Circlers? Sure. Hi, Circlers. I'm so happy to be here. I feel like the vibes are, we're under that colorful parachute thing, you know, when we were little. Oh my God, I love that. That's my favorite. I love the aesthetic of your show. It's so sweet. That makes me so happy. I love that parachute thing. <laughs> I forgot about that. Wouldn't it be fun if you recorded in that? Yeah, we should do that. <laughs> we should definitely do that. It'd be good audio quality as well. But hi, <laughs> Circlers. I'm Victoria Garrick Brown, and I'm a content creator and also a podcaster. I have a show at Dear Media as well. So we're like network sisters. We are network sisters. That's nice. <laughs> I feel like I'm back in a sorority. We should make a special handshake. Oh my God, we should. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yes. Well, Victoria, she has a podcast here called The Real Pod, which I am also going on. So keep an eye out for that. But we are so happy to have you. Welcome. Thanks. We have, we do have a lot to discuss. We just kind of started to get into it, but just starting out before we get into the Taylor Swift of it all, because Victoria is a Swifty, just like you all know that I am. So we will be talking about the Eras Tour and everything having to do with Taylor because I we both have just recently gone. Mm -hmm. And I was actually worried that I wasn't going to be able to update the circlers on the era's experience because like, you know, not everybody wants to talk about it. Right. But I'm so happy that we're going to be able to. <laughs> yeah, but we're going to force it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but first, I feel like we should tell them a little bit more about who you are in case they don't know so I'm actually so curious for you to explain how you got your start because I love your podcast. I love this is like so dumb, but like how real it is. It actually is. <laughs> hey, that's the um, hope. It, you can't it have is, a podcast called Real Pod and not get real. <laughs> it's true, but I, I do love it. But I think that your story is interesting. And so I wanted you to kind of tell them where you came from because I feel like this is something that I feel like I talk about pretty much every episode now, but a lot of people call in and ask about like, just like trying to find their place in life and trying to figure out what they want to do with their life and how they need to have it figured out by a certain time. And I feel like you have an interesting story and I want you to share it with everyone and how you got here and what your story is. Of course, I'm happy to share and please just dive in, cut me off. I tend to kind of just not shut up. I, I love talking. people that don't shut up. I really do. <laughs> okay, great. Well, then it's, e it's very easy to podcast with someone who doesn't shut up. Totally. So okay. I get it. Well, here we go. So when I was born, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I went to USC. So right here in LA. So fight right on. on. Yep. Fight on. Good stuff right there. And I played volleyball there, which was exciting. I was a competitive athlete my whole life growing up. And playing in the Pac-12 specifically at USC was my absolute dream. And so in 2015, I was on the team and I was starting as a freshman. So I really quickly found my way to create impact, but it was a lot of pressure and just a lot. And I don't think I was a hundred percent prepared or ready. I mean, how could any 18 year old be ready to play at that level? Really? Yeah. You just do your best when you get there and hopefully you have the support around you, which I did, but I was so in denial of you know, why am I feeling anxious? Why am I not confident? Why am I not able to go to sleep at night? Why am I super insecure about my body? And I started to go through a lot of mental health issues that I'd never had before. So mm -hmm. I started struggling with performance anxiety pretty severely. And then I was also secretly battling a binge eating disorder. So Coming out of high school, I was always like aware of calories and how much I weighed. And I did the whole obsessive Victoria's Secret model thing. But then in college, it just got worse because I was like being encouraged to lift really heavy weights and fuel and train like, you know, a national champion. And then I would go hang out with my friends who weren't athletes and they were so skinny and small and we couldn't even share clothes. And I felt like speaking of Taylor, I literally was a monster on the hill is how I felt. And they were sexy babies. And so, so I, my relationship with food just got worse because I was just trying to kind of combat everything happening around me. And then by my sophomore year, I was of course depressed. If we just kind of connect the dots of where are these two things going to lead us? And 
I was kind of at rock bottom in a situation that from the outside was supposed to be like the peak and highlight of my life at that point. Mm -hmm. And which it was in ways, but because of that, like stark contrast, I was also studying journalism. So I kind of started to gain this almost like ferocity and passion for the fact that like, I felt like no one understood what I was going through. I saw it in my teammates and I saw it in myself and I was like, no one's talking about this. And so being someone who was always comfortable in front of the camera, comfortable talking, speaking up, once I was kind of a good ways through therapy and I was starting to process, oh, like I am not inherently flawed or bad or wrong for having these problems. Like I'm in an intense situation. This environment is incredibly demanding. Of course, I'm gonna struggle in this way. Of course, I don't know the tools yet. I'm only 19. Right. So I... Long story short, in this long story, I gave a TED talk as a sophomore at USC and it was about student athlete mental health. And that did pretty well and went semi viral in the sports world. And then people started finding me on Instagram and Facebook. And I just had no idea how to kind of handle that all. But I realized I'm only a sophomore. I can keep talking about this. I can keep posting about it. So I started a YouTube channel and I was blogging life as a volleyball player. And I was posting on Instagram and then I went into public speaking and then the pandemic hit. And so I got on TikTok, like pretty much all the other creators. And since then, like have of course built this out to be, I think all encompassing of my life, but always with this through line of we're always going to be real. We're always going to be vulnerable because that's how this started in the first place right. was with this big confessional. So I kind of pride myself on no matter where I'm at in life, like I'm always going to be super real about it. And of course I'm not posting about volleyball anymore, but I'm talking about marriage and I'm talking about being lonely in your twenties and I'm talking about work and I'm talking about still my body and mental health, but always with this through line of no BS. So that is kind of me in a nutshell. I mean, it's just like so crazy. So did you write, like, how did the Ted talk come about? Yeah. Cause like, I just, it's so cool. Yeah. It was wild. And I definitely did not like seek it out. And I think everyone growing up, like you watch Ted talks and you think, Oh, I want to give a Ted talk one day, but yeah, you never, but it feels like, like impossible. Yeah, you're like, but what I say, like, yeah. how does this happen? Right. I was in a class on a Wednesday night, like a lecture at USC. And then email came through that said like once in a lifetime opportunity, Ted X USC. And it was so funny actually, because it said you have like 24, 48 hours to apply okay. because I guess they had sent it to like the engineering school and the this school and then that school. And then okay. someone two days before was like, we never sent it to the athletes. So they like mass sent it to the athletes. Oh shit, okay. And, and it literally, I think the theme for that year was like on the edge, like tech and like, it was some theme. I was like, fuck that. Like, and I just went ham writing about yeah. what I was going through. And I actually did have like, journal entries in my phone of actually the opening of my TED talk is this like monologue about like a day in my life. And mm -hmm. that was actually something I wrote down, like crying one morning because I was like, I can't with this. And I was like, here's what I'm doing today because I don't know. I just knew I would want it later. I always, do you ever do this? Like write in the notes page on your phone. Like you're the main character in a movie. Like I'm on a plane right now. Here are my friends. I here's mean, who I love. like <laughs> I, maybe not so much anymore, but like I found my notes, like my journal not even a journal from like high school, college. And it was like, it's 1143 PM yeah. sitting on my bed, like just listening, like naming like the songs I'm listening to. And I'm like, who's, who no, is this for? Fully. It's for, yeah. it's for our future self. Right? right. I look back and I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> and I'm like, who did I like? And yeah. so I kind of like that was writing about like my life. And then when it was time to apply for the Ted talk, I, you know, went through the application process. I actually got called called in. So I got to go through the first round of interviews. Okay. I got called back again and then I actually got cut and I was told oh. there's too many Ted talks on depression. So okay. bye. And I just remember thinking, oh, that's such a bummer because I think they're wrong. Like this is a, a, a niche mental health conversation yeah. that hasn't been had yet. And then actually the next week or so, like the president of the Ted committee at USC was like, hi, like I really like you and we actually want to have you back. So it ended up being like the leader of the committee was like the only one who really wanted me. Wow. But her, what she said went. So right. they brought me back and I like kind of gave it my all in this last audition and then I got it. And it's been, it was, a, it's been the most successful TED talk to come through USC. Wow. That's amazing. It's wild. I don't know where I'd be without that opportunity. <laughs> yeah. So did you see like this kind of stemming from that or were you just like, 
Did you? What did you see? Did you see anything stemming from it, or did you just think it, would, it was an awesome opportunity? Literally, I just thought it was an awesome opportunity, yeah. and I, I think it sounds so naive now to say that, but no part of me was like, "How can I leverage this to become a public speaker?" Like, no part of me thought that yeah. that would, or a content creator. Like, right. I mean, if anything, when I gave my TED talk, I was anti-social media. Okay. Like, if you go back to my Instagram at that time, like my posts look super random. It looks like a Finsta because. I was going through this whole detox with just my body image issues of how unhealthy social media was for me. Yeah. So I think in, at that time in like 2015, the only way you were famous online is if you were like a bikini model, I think for women at least. Yeah, I don't even really like remember that yeah, time right. on like, social media. There was as, nothing really. Unless you were like a gorgeous girl that people became obsessed with on Tumblr. Right. Or you like YouTube was completely different, but like at yeah. least for Instagram. Totally. Sake. So I never saw myself wanting to be that. Right. So yeah, then I I think when a lot of people started watching it and messaging me, that's when I started the wheels turned of like, well, I can keep storytelling and I can post more and now they're here and they probably right. want something. And then my friend on the lacrosse team was doing a YouTube channel as a USC athlete. Okay. And she had me in a video and I was like, this is cool. Like I watched her, how she filmed it. And I was like, I think I could do this. And so then I started vlogging and I was a YouTuber only in college. <laughs> I, don't, I don't post videos anymore. Really? No, I, it's you should. Too, long form is so hard for me. Why? I'm like, why would I do long form when I can just crank out a TikTok right now? See, TikTok stresses me out. I think people, so much. I think people's brains work for different platforms. Like every YouTuber I know who's really successful, like I was just had Alicia Marie and Remy Cruz on and they were like, we can't do TikTok. Yeah. And I was like, and I cannot sit through YouTube. Like, Really? That's yeah. so interesting. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. But it's funny. I don't watch YouTube. I will like only watch TikToks, but like posting wise, I can only post on YouTube. You know what? I watch YouTube though. Weird. Yeah. That's like interesting. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what is there to unpack? <laughs> I know. Seriously. But I feel like I'm sure there is some sort of study on that somewhere. I just think my personality is like, I have a sense of urgency. And if I can do something and do it now, that's always my choice, which I'm working on. I'm very black and white. And I okay. think with YouTube, it's like you plan the video, you film, like you're filming on this day and that day and that day. And you're right. adding all the footage together and you're editing it. And then it's coming out in a week. Like, it's such an elongated process. Yeah. I would rather just like hammer it out, edit it, and it's posted. That that makes complete sense. I respect that. But I wish I was what you were because I feel like the YouTube game is the long game and it like YouTube is the platform that stood the test of time. Like I always think I wish I could. I mean, maybe I should now being able to have an editor and like more resources, I could try yeah. it again. But like YouTube is like, yeah. if I could, I would prefer to be that. Having an editor changed my life yeah just to wrap Shout out all the footage Haley. <laughs> i know you're watching but yeah it's the best okay so now you prefer tiktok i really love tiktok i love instagram i think is my favorite platform i'm like i'm scared to say that because of the platforms <laughs> i love you all hi all uh, of the platforms are amazing yeah <laughs> no literally when you get to that place and you're like oh wait hi meta <laughs> <laughs> But you like, so you do like Instagram. I love Instagram <laughs> and I do love TikTok. They're my two favorite platforms. Okay. But I almost view like, I view TikTok as I uh, will post like random things on TikTok that like TikTok, I, I will oversaturate. And whereas Instagram, I view my feed as like my holy grail. Like okay. I'm way more particular about what I'll put on my Instagram feed. Got it. That makes sense. So I am turning 30 very soon. And I am also, you know, becoming a mother in the new year. And I've been having so many moments lately where I look at my life and I think that when I was a kid, I thought that by the time I was an adult and a 30-year-old and a mom, I would be able to do certain things that I still can't do. For example, like actually style my hair well, you know, or even have one really solid recipe that I can make for dinner. I can do like these things kind of half well, but I just am not really where I assumed I would be when I was a child. But listen to this. I started using Masterclass to learn these things that I just want to know how to do as an adult. And it has been an absolute game changer. With Masterclass, you can learn from the best to become your best anytime, anywhere, and at your own pace. Annual memberships start at $10 a month and you get unlimited access to every instructor, thousands of online lessons, exclusive content, insights, and much more. There are over 180 classes to pick from Everything from building and owning your own personal style with celebrity stylist Carla Welch to science and problem solving with Bill Nye himself. It really is just so awesome. 
I took the style your own hair for any occasion with Jen Atkin and it was just amazing. And I actually learned so much and it was just so cool that I could actually learn from the best and someone who I admire so much, Jen Atkin. And I just learned so much and I loved it and I highly recommend whether you want to become a better chef, advance your career, land a book deal or anything else, Masterclass has you covered. Gain new skills in as little as 10 minutes on your phone, computer, tablet, smart TV, and even audio mode to listen on the go. So you can just go for a little circle or strut, pop in your headphones and learn a new skill. It really is just perfect. You have to try it. Get unlimited access to every class. And right now, as a Circle Time listener, you can get 15% off when you go to masterclass.com slash circle. That's masterclass.com slash circle for 15% off an annual membership. Masterclass.com slash circle. Going back quickly to being like a college athlete, would you go back and like, would you go to USC and talk to the athletes now? Like, would you want to do work with them now? So I fortunately do have the opportunity to do that. So I went right from my senior year into public speaking. So I travel to athletic departments and I speak to college okay. students and athletes. Cool. Um, and I walk through my story and the things that I wish I knew and the tools that I think will help them and try to mitigate a lot of the stigma that I think prevents people from seeking the help. Like the fact that my whole freshman year, I just kind of gaslit myself and was in denial. Mm -hmm. I don't want other people to go through that. I want yeah. them to talk to someone immediately. So I'm super fortunate to do that now. And, you know, this fall I'll be going to a few different colleges. And yeah, recently I was able to go back to USC and speak to this athlete club. And I, lit I love it because I love, I just think when you're like, and you know, cause you used to work with, I mean, super little kids, but I just look at like high schoolers, middle schoolers, high schoolers, college, like they're just so fresh and like the yeah. world's ahead of them and it's yeah. still ahead of us. Like, right. but I think like, I remember being so curious and anyone who would take the time to talk to me, teach me something like, oh, I just couldn't like squeeze enough out of that lemon. Right. Do you, is there something that like a quick, maybe like umbrella of like little tips that you could give to the people listening who are in high school or college who might be dealing with similar things, just how to navigate that and get the help that they deserve to have? Yeah, I feel like a few ways to take this, but I think the number one thing is like, you can talk to anyone that you love and trust and you don't have to be like diagnosed with a mental health issue or be on meds to deserve to have that conversation. So your conversation could be, hey, like super random, but I'm like so stressed these days. I like can't even go to sleep. I'm so nervous. I'm constantly thinking about how I could mess this thing up. And I don't know why. That is a valid thing to say to someone. You don't have to have the answers. You don't have to know to have the conversation. Mm -hmm. I think I used to feel like unless I was a, already 100% broken, I wasn't worthy of the conversation. Yeah. But the whole point is like, let's prevent you being 100% broken and let's have the conversations early. And I think I see just high performers now having the preventative like, conversations and working with psychologists and just to maintain excellence and greatness and like keep them from burnout. So right. I love that the way like the culture has shifted to incorporate mental health resources is not just the thing you go to when shit hits the fan, but the thing you're always working on so that you can like pursue your best. Yeah. And then the other thing I'll just say is it's not that deep. There mm. are billions of people who don't know you, who don't care about you, who don't care what grade you get. Right. And I swear this thing that you think that if it happens, it's going to ruin your life. It's not. Yeah. And I just would always, I think like zooming out of myself in my life would really help me when I was feeling really anxious. Like there's so many people who don't know me. They don't give a shit about this game. They don't care. Like a grade is a letter of right. an alphabet that someone has been assigned to give you yeah. on this paper and it determines your, and like the whole thing is messed up. I it get is it. actually, yeah. You, ha you have to go through the process and we all did, but like you are so much more than the grade on the paper or if you win or lose your game. It's very true. That inspired me and I'm like <laughs> so far out of college. I was out of college before you even started. How old are you? I'm, I'll be 30 next month. Love that. 30, 30 and thriving. 30, flirty and thriving. I'm 26. 26. It's like the same age, I feel. I feel like, yeah. Once you get past 25, everything's the same. 25 to 30 is the same, I think. I agree. Marshall, how old are you? 25. Nice. How old are you? I am 23. I 
Oh my God. Happy almost happy birthday. Happy almost birthday. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I just had to gauge the room there for a second. But um, before we shit on a certain yeah. age group, 23, almost 24 year olds are so lame. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. There is so much that you learn before 25, I feel like, that you think that you would have learned like in college, like depending. I graduated college when I was 21, and like 21 through 25 was like such an insane life shift, mm-hmm. you know? It's crazy. You got married at 25, Ben. Yes. Okay. I got married a year ago on August 13th, almost. It's Our almost, one year anniversary it's is almost in a week. time. I know. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. It's been so fun. Yeah, I know how's you're the newly first year of, of marriage been for you? It's been great. Yeah, I've loved it. I feel like when you marry the right person, it doesn't feel like a whole lot has changed in a great way because mm-hmm. you're like, yes, I want to spend every day with you forever. Yeah. So it's been, it's been super great. What about you? I, yeah, it's been, it's, it also feels like pretty much the same. How long like were you guys way. together before getting married? About five years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We we're so, similar, like yeah. six years. So you met in college? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. At USC. Wow. So my, we actually, we met my freshman year, but didn't start dating until my sophomore year. I needed that single year in college. Yeah. Freshman year. <laughs> you always got to do it. I feel like it's a good, that's good to I have. was, yeah, you just, I don't know. I wanted the independence. Like I, yeah. I know part of me wanted to like settle down. And then of course I did like the next year, but. You know what? But like, if you meet the right person, it's like, it was oh, supposed to happen. Totally. Yeah. So you dated all through the rest of sophomore year till yes. the end of college. And then how long after did he propose? So we oh gosh he proposed in 2021 okay so and I graduated in 2019 okay so wow yeah and I feel like I get comments all the time that I'm like a super young bride or we got married super young but like we literally had like we knew we wanted to marry each other why would we just keep waiting until I was a certain age that people wouldn't make that comment like it changes like we're committed and we're in a relationship so why would we not like yeah. I, we want, we both wanted to get married. We were both ready to get married. So why not? Yeah. So yeah, it was, it was a uh, fun. I can't believe it's been a year. Yeah. That's exciting. How do you feel like looking back on your wedding now that it's been a year? Is there anything that you would do differently? It's so funny. You're asking me these questions. Cause these are the questions that I want to ask you. Really? Too. Yes. <laughs> so okay. I can't wait to hear everything you have to say, but no, I, I am not a big fan of looking back and like, saying how like what it could have shoulda same because I just think it you can't do anything about the past and I feel like I've been trying to do a lot of personal work like getting myself into the present moment and not having judgment on things and just recognizing an experience for the fact that it was an experience and my wedding was amazing it was a fairy tale and I was beautiful I loved it thank you so much so was yours I loved how original and just colorful and amazing it was and your little veil precious (laughs) shut up I can't with the veil but I yeah it was amazing I of course like want to go back and say I wish I was more present at my reception or I felt like you know I wish we didn't do the sweetheart table you know there's those little things but then I think about like I was present for our entire ceremony Mm -hmm. and never in my life have I actually for 40 minutes not had a thought about the past or future. Right. Like seriously, that was meditative for me. Yeah. And so I'm like, of course, like the minute the ceremony is over, my brain's going to go back to monkey brain and oh my God, look at all these people and here's the reception and like pretty overwhelming, super overwhelming. So like, you know, I don't want to like beat myself up about, you know, wishing I was more in the moment. Like Mm -hmm. it was so hard and I was in the moment for the most important part. So yeah. What about you? I feel pretty similarly. I think that like, I don't really like to, like I don't believe in like regretting things. I really try not to do that because I think that every decision that I made, I made at that moment for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy with it all. And everything that we do, like outside of weddings, but just life, like brings you to the moment that you're in now. I totally agree. I think there are so many times in life where I could be like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have been hanging out with that person. I shouldn't have, you know, like there's so many like little things that I could have like, that I could like really just harp on forever. But Mm -hmm. then it's like, it happened. I know better now. And like, it brought me to where I am now. And so it's like, it's just all a part of life. 
for anyone like listening who relates to this, one of my favorite affirmations is just like, I did the best I could with what I had at the time, period. It's like so true. You, We learn, we grow, we're different people. Like we're all like in survival mode all the time. Yeah. And I try to give that grace to other people as well. Like right. there is a reason for their actions that I, that I won't know and I will never know. And it's not personal, you know? Yeah, a lot of, I think a lot of times there are so many things that you could take personally, but it's so important to know that like, you don't know what that person is going through or what they're thinking about. And it's not actually has nothing to do with you yeah. at all. And if you think about that, like let's think about a time that you felt like, no, it was really personal. Like this person just didn't like me. Mm -hmm. Think about a time that you really had a vendetta for someone or you didn't like them and like how it was never about them. It was because you were jealous or envious or right. wanted what they had or were threatened by their success. Like, I think just the flip of that, I'm like, it's never about you. It's a projection of yeah. like what their insecurity is or what they're feeling because we do the same. Right. It does. It It's so true. And it's it's easier to think about things that way because you hold a lot less anger yeah. inside. And Towards I feel like, world. yeah. And every time I've realized that I'm like holding anger in about a certain situation, I'm like, this is like weighing me down so much more than it needs to be because mm -hmm. like I guarantee first of all that other person is not thinking about it and second of all like it's not personal I heard this expert say recently that he thinks the biggest issue with like just communal stress and anxiety like with just the world right now is just the denial of our feelings like the absolute denial of our feelings like not being able to let the anger surface or the sadness surface mm -hmm. or the frustration surface and like the sooner you allow things to come up then the more you realize oh I can carry that or it wasn't as scary as I thought and then you like breathe through it and then you move past it yeah but even like talking about mental health like when you just suppress it and you're like I don't deserve to feel this way or I shouldn't feel this way like you just push it down and then it only feeds on itself and becomes this big thing yeah whereas when you just like allow yourself to have the emotions, but don't label yourself as someone who is bad or good for having them. It's like, we're all human and we all experience these emotions. 100%. And I feel like a lot for a long time, I was like thinking I would know something was bothering me, but then in my head, I would convince myself that it actually doesn't need to bother me because of this, this and this. But like, then like the actual thought of why it was bothering me would come in and I'd be like, that's not really mm -hmm. the reason. And instead of like, reasoning out of that in my head I would just say like what I knew was the truth the yeah. whole time that I was trying to push down and like actually just like letting it out makes it so much more solvable than just trying to reason in your head as to why it shouldn't actually be a thing they say that what you resist persists so whenever I have Reach. those thoughts, I'm like, let's think about it. Because if I don't fucking think about it right now, it's going to keep going yeah, back. No, all day. It's, it won't stop. <laughs> It'll never stop. Yeah, exactly. I'm a big overthinker. And so I feel like a way that I've tried to stop doing that is by just like allowing the thought and then like acknowledging it and then being like, okay, you're you're overthinking that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I completely relate. I overthink everything. I'll overthink this when I leave. <laughs> oh, I overthink every time before I record. I'm like here it goes again. Like I'm going to say something like crazy. I don't know. And then I don't usually ever say anything crazy, but I, every time after I record, I'm like, should I have said that? Yeah. No, I feel you. It's fun. <laughs> We're thinking everything. It's hard too, because it's like such a normal thing to feel and everyone feels this. And then we also have like two giant cameras staring at us right now and this being recorded for the world. And I don't know about you, but like, I can't help but always think about how I'm saying things and how they're coming across. And it's been like really weird for me recently to, to, to check myself on like, I I'm always being real, but I'm like, am I? Because can you really be that real when you're being broadcast to the world? Yeah. And I definitely like believe that I am because I, I never am l making something seem a way that it isn't. Right. But like, I'm, this is an example. Like I'm so fearful to like, just talk like pop culture mm -hmm. because I'm like, that is me then judging a person totally. on like the, their life. And yeah. like, but then I'm also like, it's just, that's just normal. And you call your friend and you're like, oh my God, did you see the news about the freaking Ariana Grande divorce? And then like, you just, right. but then I'm like, I would never say it online. Cause I'm going to get people. I mean, even I was babysitting my mom's dog and my dog, the mom, my mom's dog, Teddy, I'm walking her on a leash. I did a, like a cute little video of the dog walking to baby shark. I get a DM. <laughs> would love to see her with a harness. 
I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's not my dog. I'm like, yeah. she hates the harness. Yeah. The leash is so loose. I can fit my whole fist through it. Right. But it's like, that's just an innocent post. And someone's like, would love to see a harness, like criticizing yeah, me. There's always something. And it's, it's just sometimes the weeks and days, like it's, it gets hard. And then think about that, that then the next time I'm walking a dog, I will think, oh my God, I shouldn't post the dog because there's not a harness. Right. Right. We love dogs. No, I know. Our dogs are the most spoiled dogs in the world. Yeah. You know? And I think when you are on this, like when you're getting a message like that, then all of a sudden when you want to talk about pop culture, you're like, but then I'm doing the thing that makes me sad when someone does to me. So I don't want to do that thing. And then so it's like you, it's like a, it's hard to do. Fully. Yeah. That's why I have a hard time talking about pop culture too. Cause like I have so many thoughts about certain things, but then I'm like, but then I, I get upset when someone like assumes something about me or when someone says something about me. So why would I do that same thing? Yes. But then I'm like, but I also really do want to talk about Ariana Grande's divorce. <laughs> no, but you're and SpongeBob. You're a hundred percent correct. And I love how, I think we just like Jones does awful that. Did you watch the Jones awful black mirror? No, but I actually, <laughs> the podcast, the po- I just listened to the podcast oh, episode you where you talked to- about it. Oh God. You, so the, you're telling me you listened to the chaotic life update. Oh God. I did. I love, I love any sort of life update. So I was like, this is the one I'm listening to. Too. Okay, great. But you did freak me out at the end. Yeah, a little bit. yeah. Sorry, we were talking about <laughs> sim theory for anyone who's curious what I was talking about. But um, and I hate that conversation so very much. But yeah. I powered through. I was interested. Like you were, you it kept me listening. It doesn't have to be a scary thing. Like yeah, I think I know. There's two ways to look at life, and you can look at it like, oh my god, nothing matters, and then like let that like freak you out, or you can be like, oh my god. Nothing matters. It's Tell them true. you love them. Go for the job that's, you want. It's so Enjoy true. Enjoy your life. Yeah. And I, just, I view it in the latter. I like, uh, That's so, so true. It's more just like things like that just freak me out. <laughs> like if we're not Source Joan. <laughs> you have to watch the episode. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I can't watch the episode. I feel as though like I don't think that that would sit well with me. Yeah. And it's not because I'm like, oh, nothing matters, blah, blah, blah. It's more just because I'm like, yeah, I just want to keep living. No, I hear and like it. not think about I, what's going on. I completely respect that, and for those same reasons, I don't mess with like the spiritual realm. Okay, because like I believe it, so I don't want to touch it with a ten foot pole. Got it. Okay, well, I'll, maybe I'll watch the episode of Black. What's it called? Black Mirror. But the f- no, the episode, episode Joan is awful. Joan is awful. Annie Murphy, I love her from Schitt's Creek. I do love Annie Murphy. I literally would watch anything she's in. I'm obsessed with her. Wee you, wee you, wee you. That's that's the alarm, the single circular alarm. And I'm talking to all of my single circlers. You know this. You know I'm not just talking to the single circlers out there looking for something serious. Because although summertime is kind of coming to an end, it technically is still summer. And what is a better what is a more better time to have fun and make some unforgettable memories than summertime? And Tinder is here to help you find the perfect partner for those moments. Remember, it starts with a swipe. So many possibilities really are just a match away. Tinder is the world's most popular dating app, and that means there are the most opportunities there to find whatever it is that you are looking for, because success on Tinder really can mean whatever you want it to. And there is a reason why over 1.5 million Tinder users go on an IRL date every week. It's just the best. Other dating apps are hard, but Tinder really does make it easy and fun. And also, what I find most important, straightforward. So you can say exactly what you want, exactly what you're looking for, and you can make sure that the people you're talking to are in the same boat. So you don't have to go back and forth and try to clarify and waste your time with someone who's not looking for the same thing as you. Tinder just released Relationship Goals, a new status for your profile that shows others what types of connections you are looking for. Relationship Goals is just one of many features that Tinder has released to make sure you're comfy on the app. And you know I want all my circlers comfy at all times. Plus, Tinder has more safety features than any other dating app. On Tinder, it starts with a swipe. Download Tinder today and explore all of the possibilities for yourself. I really cannot believe I'm even saying this because it feels like summer has just started, but back to school shopping is here. And I have a little tip for all of you who will be taking part. You can cross everything off your list before the big day with DoorDash. Stock up on supplies and lunchtime snacks all in one place. All of your favorite retail, your favorite grocery, your favorite convenience stores are on the app so you can shop everything you or your kids need for back to school. That's right. It is the one-stop shop to fill your bellies 
your backpacks, and your pantry. Plus, it's DoorDash, which means my personal favorite thing, you're going to be enjoying that next level convenience with delivery in the hour, making it easier than ever before to get your back to school needs fast. You got to be prepared before the big day arrives and DoorDash is the easiest and most convenient way to do that. Shop DoorDash to get everything you need for the back to school season delivered right to your door. Order now for stress-free back to school shopping. Use promo code CIRCLETIME to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more at convenience, grocery, or retail stores on DoorDash. That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more using the promo code CIRCLETIME. Don't forget, that's code CIRCLETIME for 50% off your next order. Use promo code CIRCLETIME to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more at convenience, grocery, or retail stores on DoorDash. Terms apply. I just want to say, I love that you like kind of said, I made this comment about wanting to talk about pop culture. And then you, in a way, helped me realize like, oh, and then we're doing the thing that you just said that you didn't like. And I just think that's such an appropriate check. And it's so true. And it's wild how we say we don't like things and then we fall into the same habits that create the issue. Yeah. And so I always love becoming aware of like the ways that I am indirectly or directly you know, like showing up in the world. And is it the way that I want to show up? It's true. But then at the same time, I love when people are not scared to just like be honest about a situation and like just talk about whatever they want to talk about. Because like there are like certain situations in pop culture and stuff that I'm kind of like, well, I don't want somebody to feel like I'm judging them or whatever it is. So I don't say anything. But then I hear someone talk about it. and I'm like, I totally agree. Yeah. Or I'm like, I wish I said, I wish I said that. Yeah. I almost think for me, it's less like I want to gossip about someone's life. And it's more that I want to like, I know you do like reviews of outfits. Yeah. That's so fun. I feel like I can't do that because I just think my community would be like, everyone has their own style. Like you're hating on it. And I kind of feel that too. Like, and I, my friends and I will send the outfits back. Loved this look, like didn't like this one, but Mm -hmm. I'm scared to put that on the internet. Yeah, I have struggled with that doing the fashion reviews, but we try and like make it pretty clear that it's like, like I try not to be like, I hate this or like this is an ugly dress. Like it's more like this looks like a napkin. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> like an indiscriminate like, like, fact. Just like, like a metaphor for what something might look like instead of like, she looks awful. Yeah. There we go, <laughs> next. Like yeah. I never want to do that. Right. And like also there's so many times where it's like, I don't know any of these people that I'm reviewing. So it's like I always make it pretty clear that it has nothing to do with the person or who they are, or what they do or anything. It's literally just what they put on their body. But then I do the same thing to myself. Like yeah. I was trying on clothes for something yesterday and I was like making jokes that I would make in my videos about other people, about what I was wearing. And then I was like, it's going to happen. I'm going to do the same thing to myself. I did that to myself. I was like roasting my old outfits and I was getting people saying, I dress like this now and I'm really offended. I'm like, how could I possibly know that? Yeah. I'm literally shitting on myself. Right. And also I'm you, to do. yeah, because you change and people, yeah. it's, it. There, there's always going to be. But you know something. what? I think too, like going to the, like checking myself, ourselves. But if we don't receive the negative comments, we're not receiving the positive comments. And right. all of that is what keeps us having a career. So it's yeah. like, that is just, that's life. And if that's this business and it's not like my favorite part of it, but it's part of it. Yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Well, something that you might not want to talk about <laughs> that I'm going to make us talk about <laughs> that kind of has to do with pop culture. Speaking of fear of offending the public. <laughs> Our queen. Taylor Swift, who we love so dearly, so dearly here in the circle. And I know you love her too. How did you feel about the Eras tour? Was literally unreal. Like, yeah. unreal. Yeah. It was insane from production, choreography, her vocals, mm-hmm. the setup, the cadence of everything, the costumes, it, the, the, the way the fans showed up, unreal. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that I was like pretty I was pretty mind blown the entire time I just like first of all I'm sitting there and I'm like I was at the fearless tour you know like I've been doing this for like 15 years now and it's like I was sitting there and I was like this is probably like besides my family this 
is like something that's like one of the only consistent things that's been a thing in my life since I've been <laughs> yeah. 15. The not personal, personal relationship that it's, I have with Taylor Yeah, Swift. but I was like, <laughs> I've really. just been like, feel like, I've been watching her on stage and feeling this way for so long. And like her music is like the one like consistent thing. Yeah. And I'm like, I just, it was just crazy. Cause then, and then she has done so many different types of music and and to see it all in one thing because she does a little bit from every single album and to see it all in one show you're just like holy shit you can do it all yeah like you actually can it was unreal like I think too like yeah seeing her switch eras and yeah just yeah and then when she's like playing 1989 and you're thinking back on like when we were younger and then she's playing folklore and I'm thinking about the pandemic, like it's wild. It's crazy. And it's, and it was just, it was, it was, it was amazing. It really was like the best show ever, ever. Literally. My husband said yesterday to me, how, like now, like for the rest of life, like, like I'm so down to go like to the concert with you. Like, even if we have to fly somewhere, <laughs> I was like, did you just say, even if we had to fly somewhere, you'd know, has he come with me to see Taylor Swift? Like that's how much he was converted from this concert. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I, I brought Cody to the reputation show in, when was that? 2018, 2019. And yeah, I think 2018, something like that. And he, cause like, I was like this or 2017. No, definitely not 2017. Wait, I know that I went my junior year of college. I think it was 2018. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, okay, spring. My my season junior year was 2017. That's why I was confused. Okay. Because I Don't think- roast me. Sorry. Not 2017. <laughs> no, but I think, and I was like, I told him then, I was like, this is going to be, this is going to be really good. I'm not making this shit up. She's going to fucking crush it. Which she obviously did. So like he went into this, the era, the era's tour he knowing know. that it was going to be- He know. Yeah, and- we were both not disappointed at all. I mean, I was like, there were some moments of like full on, full tear. And he was like, okay. Definitely. <laughs> you okay? Like, it's going to be fine. But I was, it was just, it was amazing. It yeah. really was. Unreal. I was sobbing into literally like the first sight of Taylor. Yeah. Um, so Max just, he had to gear up for, you know, the, the remaining three and a half hours. It's long. But he did say that he's down to watch the reputation. Cause when we were leaving, I was like, I was like, and the whole reputation album album tour is on Netflix. He's like, okay, just one night, just throw it up. Like, don't even warn me and like I'll get into it. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> oh my God, that's so exciting. I know. When are you gonna do it? I I I I know his like moods and I have to wait. Like last night yeah. he wanted to watch the Johnny Manziel Untold. Okay. So I was like, okay, it's not the night, it's football right, night. Right, right. But I know his vibes and like there'll be a night. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't it's wait. The best. It's such a sick. Okay. So that's one of my favorite albums is reputation. My three no hezzy favorite albums are fearless reputation and folklore. Okay. I just said nice. no hezzy favorites, but there are still like some other albums. I of course love. Do you want to say those as well? Yes. Like okay. speak now evermore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> I mean, that's all like, I would say those are the ones that I'm like listening to the most. Yeah. It's funny because I, if I'm like thinking of the, all the albums that I love, I would say like folklore is not like, it doesn't come to mind right away. But like the one song that I'm constantly listening to is Cardigan. And then I was like, and then when she was playing all the folklore songs, I was like, oh, I'm obsessed with all of these songs. Yeah. Yeah. And so I feel like I, I always kind of switch it up a little bit. Me too. And then like, I'm sitting here in a panic, like, oh my God, I didn't say red. Yeah. I obviously love red. Like obviously. I literally like those songs. Oh my God, this is actually really funny. But my very, very brief high school boyfriends, like literally a month, but he, like I was in his, I was in his car. We were going to a movie and he's playing like Taylor Swift. And I'd like, I've never heard the song before. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, what is this? Like Taylor Swift, I've never heard it, but I've heard every song. He's like, oh yeah, it's the album that's like about to come out. And I was like, you illegally downloaded Taylor Swift for me? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that, what, that's an act of love. That's really me, sweet. But not for her. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as a Swifty, it's kind of fucked yeah, up. Yeah, no, it really but is. But like for you, I'm really excited. <laughs> but I just randomly, and it was the Red Album. So I always think about how oh my God. this guy from high school illegally Where downloaded it for it? me. 
I don't even know. It, of course, it was like a mouse voice. Like it was like two X speed right, to get right, it like right. off of like LimeWire. Yeah, but I was um, always too scared to. to yeah, do no, that. I never did that. I always waited. I also will always remember like when Speak Now came out, and I was like, buy every mm-hmm. one one dollar ninety nine song. I'm like, buy, buy, yeah. buy, buy. And then the like video because they had she she filmed it all, and then had the whole live version also as an album. So I have that whole one as yes. well. Just I bought every single thing that she could have ever done. Yeah. No, big big fan. Yeah, I know. But I, I feel like sometimes I like forget to say an album and then I'm like, oh shit. I also love that. And watching it all, I was like, Yeah. It's pretty hard to choose. It's pretty hard to choose. And nineteen eighty nine is like so boppy. Like I love it. Like also just new romantics, like underrated, yeah. underrated banger. But I am just a pl- at a place in my life where the folklore evermore songs are just hitting deeper. Like yeah. I like the more emotional mm-hmm. and slower, mm-hmm. like really into the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. Ones. And I mean, she's such a genius lyric such wise genius. that it it's fun to listen to, even though they're like slow. If I'm like, but if you like listen to what she's saying. Exactly. It's crazy. That's my thing. If people really say they don't like her music, they aren't listening to the lyrics or they yeah. haven't had anyone like properly walk or explain them through. Yeah. Like what a song means or what she's talking about. Totally. Because when I, once I do that to like my, my husband, he's like, whoa. Yeah. This is wild. Yeah. I'm like, I know. It's true. Did, what were your surprise songs? Cause you went twice, right? Yes. My surprise songs the first night were, I can see you. Nice. So speak now TV, mm-hmm. the vault. Speak now, TV, TV. I haven't thought about that. Taylor's version and the vault, TV, TV. Holy shit. <laughs> TV squared. Crazy. Um. So that was awesome. And then Maroon. Okay. On the oh, piano. yeah. That was a good one. It was amazing. And I didn't even put together the whole, like, do you, did you follow the whole birthday drama that um, went with that? I, I saw a little bit of it. Yeah. That I'm afraid to speak of on like actually. Yeah. But um, I, there's so there's so many theories and stuff that I'm like, I went something down a, has to be wrong. I went down a rabbit hole that entire next day. Like that one I I believe. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but there are just some where I'm like and it's not even so much like the theories of like who this stuff is about and whatnot, but like it's more just like a the ones that are like this is coming out tonight because of this this and this. Yeah. And I'm like well, you guys are going to be sad wait. in 12 hours when this doesn't happen. It stresses yeah. me out for everyone. I, yeah. I will say, though, like with certain of the theories or the conspiracies, I was laying in bed two nights ago. Sometimes I do this and I'm like, I'm crazy. I'm like, I'm laying in bed just watching YouTube videos and TikToks of this woman I don't know. And like <laughs> yeah. genuinely like getting emotionally invested in like, yeah, no, is this did it happen or not? Yeah. Um, and literally, I feel like there's way too many things like that I'm gaslighting myself telling me telling myself it didn't happen like it, okay there's so many like there is there's so direct. many out there <laughs> like there's just so many things <gasps> there's so many things and sometimes I'm like does she get overwhelmed by this well you know what's interesting that I was talking about with Max is that we know so much through her songs mm-hmm but that's like the only portal, if you will, mm-hmm. where we get the communication from her. Yeah. Because like, obviously she doesn't have a podcast. She's not going on a lot of podcasts. She's not doing lots of long form interviews. Like, right. So when we hear from her about her life, it's through a song. Yeah. I think that's just, it's genius. It's polarizing. Yeah, it's true. And that's why I think we hang on leaves, to everywhere. It leaves a lot up to the imagination. Yes, but then sometimes not. Like would have, could have, should have. Like- yeah. You know, that's nail on the head. Like, that's true. So sometimes she like does t- like spoon feed you. It's called Dear John. And then like other times it's like right. such but a mystery. But apparently Dear John might not even be about the John that we thought it was about. Did you see that theory? I don't, I don't, I didn't see if I don't know if I buy it. Because I don't know if I buy it either, but it's just like, because then I'm like, okay, now you're taking everything. Now you're taking the things that I thought I knew. No. And you're fucking with me. I don't. And now, now I don't know. I don't believe that because I think there's way too much of like an obvious media stir around yeah. the alleged John. Right. So I feel like someone would have stepped in to like really clarify that. Like if it wasn't him, like his team would have been like, if it really wasn't about him, I think his team would have been like, you guys need to like 
if you, if I was in the industry and a random podcaster was getting attacked because of something I said, and it wasn't about them, you don't think they would come to me or like you would go to someone and say, Hey, can you clear this up? Because yeah. people are getting it all wrong. And like that never happened because it was him. Or because she just doesn't talk about, she doesn't clarify things. But I, I think she's too good of a person to like let someone's like get falsely accused for the wrong thing because she knows that from rep. That's true. You're so right. She's too but good of a person. Here's the problem. We're like everyone else sitting here like thinking we know it. <laughs> we we we'll no, never know. She's I, such a mystery. I will never know. Yeah. I don't think that I know anything except like the words to the songs. Yeah. That is the only thing I know for sure that I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I was, Every, there's just so many theories. And sometimes I'm like, it's going to be okay, guys. Well, let's just see what happens when it happens. Because <laughs> you're, you're a chill Swifty. I try I'm, to be a chill Swifty. I'm, I'm, I, if you're, if chill is like, you know, here and then whatever we're calling up here is like, you know, very, very invested Swifty. I think I'm a medium. Okay. That's good. We're like, on, we're, we're balancing it out a little bit. It's nice to have a conversation with a medium Swifty as a chill Swifty, <laughs> just to kind of like catch the vibe, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. What were your surprise songs for the second night that you went? The second night that I went was our song on guitar. Oh, that's a good one. Like literally that was Yeah, unreal. that's pretty crazy that you got that. So when she was like, and you can, you just know the guitar happening. Yeah. And I'm like, I was riding shotgun. Yeah. And the whole crowd loses it. Mm -hmm. And then the piano song was from 1989. Oh, it was, um, it was one that I don't know very well. It was, you're in love. Yes. You're in love. Yes. You're in love. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was so beautiful. <gasps> Thank you. And see, but when those things happen, I just, I feel like I get mad at myself. I'm like, stupid. Come on. You should literally, have known this literally, one. That's why I'm medium. <laughs> I know. I knew the whole chorus, but. Yeah. I do know that one, but I, mine were Death by a Thousand Cuts, which I. Say goodbye and stuff. Uh, yeah, which I'm cuts. like obsessed with and that she's already sang. So I didn't think we were going to get it. Going to get it. But then we did. And you're on your own, kid. That one, I would. That is like to me one of the songs to get. I I know. I loved every second of it. But I think I got so invested in hoping that it was other ones that I was like almost disappointed. See, I wasn't. Yeah. Because it's so good. But I was like, I thought too much about the other ones that I might get. And I wasn't expecting to get Death by a Thousand Cuts. And I think that opened a whole can of worms of me thinking that I was going to get something else that she's already saying. Yeah. So I was just kind of spiraling a bit. I did not get into the whole like Swifty surprise song, like guessing just because I was also trying not to do too much. Like I didn't want to know too much about the concert before it happened. I didn't either. But the only thing I did was look it up right before, like what hasn't she played? Got it. And then I was like, oh, I have potential to get these songs. Got it. I'm going to, now I'm, yeah. I really tried my but, best to manifest and yeah. it didn't work. But, but it's see, okay. like you're on your own kid is so good. Like I would have, I know, no, I would have I know. died to hear her saying, I hosted parties and stuff. Yeah. Of my and body. yeah, it was, it was amazing. It wow. was amazing. But I'm, I'm a, I'm a lover girl. Lover is amazing. That was our first dance song. What was your first dance song? It was, I only want to be with you, but the Post Malone version. Oh. I only want to be with you. You know that song? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> so, yeah, I that was, it was not a Taylor Swift song, but I did walk down the aisle to Daylight. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Just so. like the instrumental or like the track of her singing? Instrumental. Gorgeous. Yeah. So. Gorgeous. <laughs> that's another good one. <laughs> there's just like, there's, there's too many good ones, but I really, I kind of thought I was going to get Cornelia Street. Mm. That's what I was manifesting. <laughs> and, and, Sorry, and, I can't help but just it. like sing every song. No, title it's, you say. I totally understand. It's, like, it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse. I it, know you feel it. I, I'm a singer myself, but I, that's like, I think I was like, it's going to be Cornelia Street. And then it wasn't. And then I was like, but then I was like, it's okay. It's you're on your own kid. Yeah. But it's something I kind of just wanted it to be a little bit of an older song. Something about a surprise song being like kind of an older one made me was like exciting to me because yeah. I'm like, I can see. I don't know. It, it, Midnight's is so new to me that it's like still so fresh. Whereas the old ones, I'm like, we'll probably never get this again. Whereas Midnight's like, maybe we will. But then the whole time she was on stage, I was like, is this the last time I'm ever going to see her perform? No, 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 no. She is definitely like, she's a machine. I don't see her walking away or 
like she's going to continue like absolutely transcending, I think. Okay. If you say so. I think. Okay. Wow. I, I hope so. <laughs> because the whole time I was like, oh my God, oh my God, what if this is the last time no, I've ever seen her? No and then way. I, okay. She's, she is. I, I kind of thought she was who like. quits at the top of their game? I don't know. Not LeBron. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's a good point. You just keep going. Yeah. Okay. You just keep going. I'm glad we got to get this off our chest because yeah. I really needed to talk about this. Yeah. We have one more thing I want to do with you quickly. It's our journal time. Okay. You can choose one of these. Oh, just one? Just one to answer. And I have no idea what it says. I'm choosing the sparkly one. Good. And you have to just, you can just give a quick answer on it. I don't even know which one it is. It says. Have you ever had an imaginary friend? We get this one all the time. Do you want me to redo it? No. I do you Have you ever? No. Come on. Do you want me to redo it and you can retake it all? We don't have to retake it. You can redo it though. Okay. <laughs> but no, I never did. You never had an imaginary friend one time. Mm, no. Okay. That's fine. I'm not judging you. <laughs> Funny how like if you didn't have one, you're like, you're, you're the one who's. Like... <laughs> Maybe I'm just trying to make myself feel better for Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Top 10 list of things you dislike. Oh my God. That's so hard. Only Taylor Swift songs. I'm just kidding. Oh my God. I would never. <laughs> Top 10 things. You can so name like three things that you don't like if you, if three, make, just if like in the world. Or, yeah. Three things I dislike. I dislike the sound of a fork scraping on a plate. Oof. That's a good one. Oh, I dislike when people are like really dismissive or like act higher than thou and like don't treat everyone nicely. Okay. Same. I like some people because I think some people might think that's like a cool thing. Like that's why I said it. But yeah. it's like I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. And then one more thing that I dislike: mustard. Really? Ooh, I love mustard. Yeah, but I respect that. It's tough for me. I'm a not a mustard girl. That's okay. That's okay. Those are three really good ones. You hit all the marks. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This was so fun. I'm so happy we got to chat. And would you like to tell the circlers where they can find you? Yes. Thank you for having me, Kelsey. This was so fun. It was so fun. It was a cup filler for sure. You can find me at my podcast, Real Pod. That's also at Dear Media. And Kelsey's gonna be on an episode. So listen to that. We're gonna we're gonna get her crying. You're gonna get me crying. No, I'm kidding. You probably easily. But could. that's the goal. That's the goal. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> and then you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Victoria Brown with an E at the end. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. See you guys next time. Bye. Please note that this episode may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for products and services. Individuals on the show may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to in this episode.